yes, there is. Uh, there are two books out on the cave by Jean Clot, uh, one of the protagonists in the film. And I think the, the discoverers have uh, published a book. They actually are in there twice in the credits at the end. They appear again because uh, they are the tragic figures uh, uh, believing that they had proprietary rights to the cave, started to sue the French state. And they have been suing the French state since uh, 14 years, lost every single lawsuit, uh, lost every appeal, spent all their money. It's really kind of tragic. Because of the film, and I tried very, very hard to have them in the movie, guiding us through the cave, they wouldn't do it because they didn't want to compromise their position in court. Uh, but I persuaded uh, both the uh, Ministry of Culture and the discoverers to name um, a, a mediator. So it will be mediated, it should have been mediated already, hasn't been done yet, but I hope this uh, craze will, will end. Um, otherwise, uh, um, I have not gone into direct uh, studies of the cave. There's not too much out there yet. And it will take decades of research, archaeological research, for example, until we have more convoluted uh, and more fact-based uh, results from science. But the strange thing is my very first awakening, intellectual, spiritual awakening, came through uh, cave paintings. I, uh, <coughs> you may know that I grew up in the Bavarian mountains. I mean, really, really remote. I had no idea that cinema even existed until I was 11. And I made my first phone call when I was 17. So that gives you a little bit of an idea, but uh, wow. my family moved to Munich, and uh, when I was 12, maybe 13, I walked past a, a bookstore in, in the display, among others. I, all of a sudden, I spot, I was just like froze in my tracks. I see a book on cave paintings. I had no idea that cave paintings existed, and it said uh, Paleolithic and 12,000 years back, and there was a wonderful horse. And I wanted to buy the book, and I didn't have any money. So I started, I, I had something like 50 cent per month as pocket money. And that wasn't enough to, to buy and to, to save it. It would have taken too long. So I, I started to work as a ball boy in tennis courts and, and made money. And each week, I would sneak by and look uh, if the book was still there. I hoped and prayed that nobody would buy the book. So the book, I thought it, apparently there was only one. <laughs> so finally I, I bought the book and when I opened it, this, this kind of uh, awe, this kind of shudder of awe is still in me. And of course, uh, over the course of time, I've read a lot about cave paintings, but of course, <clears throat> all the cave paintings that were discovered so far are much, much younger in date. They are only I say only 12, 14, maybe 15,000 years back in time. Um, it's it's uh, less than half less than half the time distance than to Chubby Cave. Um, many of these caves are closed now, shut down categorically. Lascaux, the most famous one, shut down, and it's probably the best uh, described and best researched cave. Too many people who, who went in there left uh, uh, breath, uh, left a mold uh, on the walls that is spreading and they can't control it fully. So that was shut down. Altamira in the Spanish Pyrenees shut down and I think a couple of others. So the, the greatest, one, most wonderful ones, Lascaux, Altamira are, are shut down. And it may happen with uh, Chauvet as well. They've been extremely cautious. Uh, but I have departed a little bit from the question about research. Uh, uh, very little research uh, on Chauvy Cave from my side, but of course I kept talking every day, every evening with the uh, scientists about their findings.